A normal heart rate is between 60 to 100 beats. That's the range that is considered normal. Now, if your heart rate is above 100, then it is called tachycardia. If your heart rate is below 60, that's called bradycardia. Here are five ways that you can make sure your heart rate is considered in that normal range. Most people that are unhealthy have too high of a heart rate. And so that tachycardia tends to be a major problem because your heart is overworking. So most of these are going to help you lower your heart rate. If you already have a low heart rate, then these things that I'm going to mention are just generally healthy for you. So number one is cardiovascular exercise. Now there's a thing that is extremely popular on YouTube and social media called high intensity interval training. And that is the type of training that can be done when you're actually already in shape and you're looking to step it up to the next level. But if you're interested in improving your cardiovascular fitness, then the best type of exercise is any type of walking, running, cycling, swimming, rowing, anything where you can get your heart rate up to a certain level and maintain that for a period of time. As a general rule, when you're exercising, this is not the numbers at rest, this is when you're exercising. If you take 180 minus your age, so if you're 50 years old, 180 minus 50 is 130. Thus, when you exercise, you want to start exercising and get your heart rate up to about 130 in that general range and maintain that for a period of time. The problem with high intensity interval training is your, your heart rate will skyrocket really high and then you'll be letting it drop down. Then it'll go high again and drop down and that up and down interval is great for fitness. But as far as cardiovascular fitness, you want to be able to maintain a reasonable heart rate so that you're not getting into that super high heart rate that could be dangerous if you already have cardiovascular disease. Number two is eating fish. People that eat fish, according to the American Heart Association, have lower resting heart rates. So twice a week at least, eat your fish. Number three is a little easier said than done, but you need to reduce stress. When you have a lot of stress over a period of time, it raises your cortisol levels, it raises your adrenaline, it stimulates your sympathetic uh, nervous system, and all these things will raise your blood pressure. So when you can find ways to reduce stress, and there are many different things you can do. You could do deep breathing exercises, and actually number one, uh, cardiovascular exercise is a great way to reduce stress. Your cortisol levels will go down, your adrenaline levels will go down, your, your sympathetic activity will decrease and your parasympathetic nervous system will be stimulated, thus lowering your blood pressure. Number four, you're probably not going to like this, but it's kind of the truth. And whether you like it or not, it's just that's the way it is. There are 60 different genetic variations that will influence your heart rate. So these 60 variants in our genetics have been discovered and it's kind of fascinating that there are that many. Your resting heart rate may be genetically determined or predetermined or given a certain range. Some people are hummingbirds and their heart rate is always in the 80s or 90s and that's considered normal for them. Some people are in the high 50s or lower 60s and that's just the way it is. It's not based on their cardiovascular fitness, it's based on genetics. Now the fifth and final thing that you can do to lower your resting heart rate is to stop smoking. Now do we really have to explain this? Yes, we do because people are still smoking. The tobacco industry is still a thriving business. If there was no demand, they wouldn't be in business. But quite frankly, if you look at their stock, they're doing just fine. So clearly a lot of people are still smoking. Now the issue with smoking is when you do smoke, your body is essentially deprived of oxygen. And when your body needs more oxygen, your heart is going to work harder in order to try to get oxygen to those tissues that need it. 
So let's say you're walking up a flight of stairs and you're a smoker. Your blood vessels may not be supplying enough oxygen to your leg muscles. So your heart is going to compensate and what it's going to do, it's going to do what it naturally knows how to do, which is to try to beat faster, to try to get more oxygen to your leg muscles so you can basically survive. So the reason why smokers have a higher heart rate in general is because their heart is actually working harder. It's literally trying to survive this situation because your body is oxygen deprived. So I hope you found this video interesting. These are the five ways you can lower your resting heart rate. If you would like to know what should your heart rate be specifically when you do exercise, then at the end of this video, I'm gonna put a link. There'll be a box over here. You can watch that video and I can give you all the details of what your heart rate should be and how to calculate it when you exercise. So make sure and wait till the end of the video and I'll make sure and put that box right there. You just have to click it. I have two more things I'm gonna discuss with you and then you can get onto that video. Lower blood pressure, enhanced heart health, protect your arteries, improve your energy, improve your bone health, help migraines, chronic pain, and depression, reduce artery stiffness, and better sleep. These are only the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the benefits of magnesium. The soil sucks, we don't eat enough organic vegetables, and that is why it's so hard to get enough magnesium in our diet. Now the supplements that I take are from the video sponsor, Magnesium Breakthrough, and they have a great product that has seven different types of magnesium in it, all listed right here. Now when you get all these major forms of magnesium, then your body really starts to improve and that is when the magic happens. I take two tablets at nighttime. It gives me 500 milligrams of magnesium per day and it really helps me sleep like a baby. There will be a discount code and the link for this type of magnesium down in the description. If you have specific questions in regard to blood pressure, your own health and wellness, we actually do Zoom appointments as well as telephone appointments. We do these Zoom and telephone appointments from all around the world. So you're more than welcome to call our office, schedule an actual Zoom or a telephone consultation with me. And what we're gonna do is we are going to section off a piece of our day just to speak to you and answer all your questions. So if you're interested in that, there's a link down below. You can get to my website and then just contact us. Now there is a fee for a Zoom or telephone consultation. So it's not free, but I can promise you this, you're gonna get your money's worth.